Kirby. Dale Kirby, you're on the air. Go right ahead, sir. Hi, how are you this evening? I'm fine, thanks. And how's your candidacy in St. John's North going for the NDP? It's going great. I mean, the campaign's really in full swing, uh, despite the absence of the writ at this point. Yeah. And there's a lot of issues we could discuss, as I've been going door to door this past few weeks. I mean, I've been discussing people with people, our platform, the planks that are released, and uh, sort of where we're going, where the plans are, and listening to them uh, talk about the issues and challenges that they're dealing with in our communities. And I've really gone to a lot of different areas, whether it's uh, public and subsidized housing or newer housing developments or you know, tenants and rentals, because they're, it's a pretty big riding or a pre- pretty big district. Uh, you've got uh, you've got all kinds of economic uh, uh, classes, you might say, for want of a better word, in that district, haven't you, Dale? Yeah, there are more than 8,700 voters in yeah. the district, so it's quite large. Uh, geographically, it's large. Of course, yeah. some areas are industrial. Um, but it's been going quite well, and the response has been really good. I'm very encouraged. I, I feel very positive about where where I, I can go with this. And of course, I'll be elected at the ripe old age of 40 if I do. Uh, yeah, so one of the p- to one of the points made by uh, people who are analyzing the situation and the poll results and so on is that the NDP, a lot of the 22, 24 percent of the NDP support, according to that uh, CRA. Uh, poll is in uh, perhaps urban areas like St. John's, which um, means you might make some breakthroughs there, eh, in addition to Lorraine Michaels. Mm-hmm. We, we wish we knew. Of course, everyone would like to know, have the details, but uh, as politicians are fond of saying, there's only that one poll that counts, yeah. and there's only one more that's left, and that's Election Day. Yeah. Um, Bill, you know, I was involved with the student movement uh, back in the 90s, and of course I fought for the students who were displaced from the career academy, and I fought against increases in tuition and tried to make education a little more accessible for people or tried to work to get the liberals at the time to uh, come across in that. And uh, Mm. I was pretty perturbed last week when I heard about this group of students, um, those students who were supposed to be doing skilled trades programs this fall, uh, who were displaced um, by a government's decision not to fund them. I think it's, uh, I mean, these sorts of retraining programs. I think you're familiar with the situation. Yeah. I mean, th- these individuals are often adult learners who face challenges that are different than somebody who's 17 or 18 and fresh out of high school. Um, th- we have these programs as an acknowledgement that it's better for government to um, help these people get back to school than it is to have them unemployed. It's better that for them to be trained, skilled, employed, and contributing to the economy mm. than it is for them to not be. And I, know, I wanted to mention that uh, I listened to Minister King when he called in to talk to Randy about it. To, uh, he basically denied any wrong, wrongdoing on his part, and yeah. I don't really ex- accept that uh, explanation. And more or less, he, he bobbed and he weaved and he spun himself around a bit, but more or less he was standing in the same place when he was finished. Mm. If I was the minister, Bill, um, I'd take some responsibility and try and rectify the matter. But instead of apologizing, the minister purposely invaded engaged in some sort of obfuscation. You know, he, he suggested that the NDP was uh, informed in the budget estimates discussions mm-hmm. that the funding will be cut for these programs. So that's fine, but that really wasn't the problem. That's not the issue here. Mm-hmm. The problem is that the department, HRLE, Human Resources, Labor, and Employment, was supposed to notify the approved applicants by the end of July. Right. But it wasn't until the end of August that they did that. Yeah. And some of those people were, were in school. I, I actually encountered some of these people in the district as I was walking around knocking on doors, and uh, and I've been listening to, to them call into open line and calling our party, and you know some of them had actually started school, had purchased books, had enrolled their children in child care programs, mm-hmm. had uh, purchased expensive tools, uh, relocated to uh, areas or... Um, you know, housing nearer to institutions. So we have a real problem here. Um, and I think that the lack of acknowledgement on the part of the minister that it is a pro- is his problem, a problem created by his department, mm-hmm. is very concerning. Uh, okay. It's very disappointing in any case. And it also flies directly in the face of this government's own stated position on the need to increase the employability of individuals and, okay. and to meet any skill shortage that we might have coming up. Okay. So I just wanted to, follow, to more or less follow up on what he had said to Randy, because, of course, I'm limited by time. Yeah, you are, for sure. And, uh, Dale, thank you very much for your points. Um, 
we uh, look forward to further conversations on you, uh, on these topics that you've raised here now in the future. We have uh, uh, four weeks or more to go before the election, so there should be ample opportunity to get your points across. Sure, Bill. Now, when will you be signing your books? Uh, there's a launch on the 22nd of September, uh, Thursday, between uh, 7 o'clock at Chapters. Dale? Okay. Well, I hope to see you there. Okay. okay by all means. Nice to chat with you. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.